So I'm at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. I'm with Joyce Wong. You're the director of Wex, Wexford Park? I Plaza, it. yeah. Wexford Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just a director or did you write Dr- it? Yeah, or? director, writer, and I was one of the producers as well. All right, very good. So tell us about Wexford Plaza. Wexford Plaza is a dark comedy about a lonely female security guard who has a misunderstood sexual encounter with a makeup salesman. Okay, so... Yeah, it was a very interesting film for me to watch. Um, Thank you. A little bit out of the norm, but it, it, if anything, it just highlights Asian filmmaking. So uh, how, did this, how did the film come together? How did, how did the story come about? I wanted to tell a really authentic story about the particular place in the working class suburbs because I didn't feel like it was well represented in mainstream media. Is that where you grew up? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. So and whereabouts, or so, what kind? Where is the setting of, of the? Film? So it's it's a place called Scarborough, and it's um, kind of like a suburb of Toronto, mm-hmm. and um, it's like not in like too close to the city center, but it's not too far away. It's still considered the city of Toronto. Yeah. And so everyone that lived there was kind of close to action, but not in it. And so, yeah. like, like so separated, and um, a lot of the places that you know I hung out. At, as a teenager and whatnot, um, have become these abandoned strip malls, mm-hmm. and um, there's like kind of this loneliness to them, but also a, like a beauty, like a poetic beauty. And so, like the second kind of like thing was like, oh man, I want to like do something to preserve them. And then the third thing that kind of like w- like added to the, the the making of this film was my best friend from high school was a security guard. She always told me these like crazy stories. And so like all those things together snowballed into this feature film. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the setting for me kind of likened it to some of the small, um, small towns in central California, um, just like outside of Fresno or something like that, where there's just not a lot going on. And it feels like the, the goal of everyone's life is to get out. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of people that are stuck there Mm -hmm. that want to get out, but they don't know how. And they're kind of like big fish in a small pond, you know? It's kind of like they're, I mean, a lot of it's economic. It's just, if you, even if you wanted to get out and you couldn't necessarily afford to get out. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Like, especially with like the housing prices right now, like in Toronto, like they've like skyrocketed without um, any increase in like income. Right. Mm -hmm. Because like housing has become like such like a um, like a commodity rather than a yeah. necessity, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's happening out here too. Yeah. I, I just don't know how people can afford to live in these homes they're building. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, and and you, th- there's kind of a unique storytelling gimmick you use in it, and that's to follow the path of the two main characters. So um, I don't want to say you're telling the same story twice, but you're following. T- two paths one in the first half and first act and one in the second act um so what was what was the idea behind that and um you know i'm kind of curious as to yeah yeah, how 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 did this story just basically pull itself together so i really the one of the important themes of the the film is context Mm -hmm. because there's these two characters that are like spinning their wheels in this kind of system that's against them right but they don't know that like you know it's kind of rigged to set up to you know screw them like you know makeup salesman you know mm-hmm. and like you know in this like security job right and so um but on like a microscopic level like betty's um uh her story about um the the romance the romance between her and danny um the reason why she does the thing she does is because of lack of context and so i really wanted the audience to feel it mm-hmm. and so like I intentionally, you know, left out parts of the narrative, like during Betty's story, and then to kind of, you know, put the, you know, the viewer in a place where it's like, oh yeah, what's up with this guy, like, you know, and like, oh yeah, and then, like halfway through, just hit them with like a, oh, you guys don't know everything, you know, and so like this is this like this um, device isn't new. It's like you know a lot of yeah. filmmakers have done it before, but the, that's the exact reason why I want to use it because it's accessible, right? Right. Because I think it's really important for um, like films when they want to tell a particular message to be accessible mm-hmm. to people and for people to understand what's going on. Yeah, and that, what I liked about it wasn't it, the gimmick isn't that you need to follow both to to tell a complete story. There, there are a couple touch points, but yeah. 
in a way you're actually telling two stories and following the two characters in their in their individual lives and at the at the few moments in which they they contact each other yeah and just that kind of visceral feeling of like oh i was wrong you know <laughs> exactly like to Okay, so um, so what were some of the challenges you had in making the film? Are, are you so where are you in your filmmaking career? Are you at the beginning? Do you have a couple under your belt? No, this is my first feature. <laughs> okay, so what were you, what were some of your struggles to uh, to get that first feature done? Well, the first one is like financial, yeah. obviously, right? Because <laughs> you know you're unproven, right? And so mm. not a lot of people want to support you um, financially, nor um, just kind of. Um, um, to be part of the the process as well, right? Right. It's the, uh, the being willing to take a risk on you, knowing that the the payoff of the investment is unclear. Yes, exactly. And so this was like a labor of love. Um, both my producers and everyone involved like really, really contributed like so much heart into making this film with me. And um, and we, we did get some financing, um, but it was like always like touch and go. Like, you know, we got money for shooting. OK, like and then we start shooting and then like like, you know, a couple of days into shooting, we we're like, oh, yeah, we'll have money for post, you know. And so it was kind <laughs> of like unpredictable. And um, it was just very scary to kind of, you know, go through it, like just not knowing what was going what was going to happen, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so that was one thing. Another thing was just casting, right? Um, it was like a uh, non union actors. And mm -hmm. so, um, trying to find the ma female protagonist was so hard to find someone that had the vulnerability and also the agency. And so we like, you know, um, the Danny, the male protagonist, I knew who I was cast going to cast from the very beginning. Cause I've seen him in plays. I knew he was awesome. You know, just that he's been around the Asian, um, diaspora festival circuit. So I've mm -hmm. seen him forever. Um, but with, um, Betty, right. It was just like, we saw a lot of, um, actresses, but they weren't right. Like, and like, we just kept on pushing it back cause we didn't want to start it without the right cast. Right. Cause that makes or breaks the film, you know, especially when the film doesn't have like any bells and whistles. It's kind of a very simple, small film. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we, we finally found her. Um, and she was, she's an ex director that, um, quit filmmaking and was working in a small, uh, even smaller town. Uh -huh. Like that was a, like around two hours away. Um, that, who started becoming a dog groomer. Okay. And then, I was going to say security guard. <laughs> no, no. Was, yeah. And so, so yeah, so we were just really lucky to find her and uh -huh. yeah. So, okay. So I mean, it's okay. So, I mean, it does definitely sound like that you were, you know, there were just touch and go moments of no go and go. Um, at what point did you really feel like, okay, it's, we're going, this is it. We're, oh. Like we're gonna go. Yeah. When, when we when we got her, when we casted her. Uh -huh. Yeah, because there's three things that we weren't gonna like, the acting. So if the male wasn't right and the and the female protagonist wasn't right, mm -hmm. we weren't gonna start. If we yeah. don't have the right strip mall, we weren't gonna start either. Uh -huh. So those were the like three elements that we needed. And then this because the strip mall, we'd been pursuing that one for months. And so, um, like, so my producer, Matt Grayson, um, he had been calling them like every week for like <laughs> months. Right. And he couldn't even get through to the, the property, like the guy who actually run things. Cause the uh -huh. secretary was like, no, no, no. And finally, Oh, well, like, you had to get through the secretary. First. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, cause the Lola, like then it was like to the coordinator and they're like, no, don't waste our time. But then finally he got up to like the guy who actually owned it and they were going to make a killing off of it because they're building like townhouses, uh -huh. like, like it's it's actually gone now that that's oh, okay. um and so he's like yeah sure you know I, I love supporting you know young talent you know like yeah ooh the arts <laughs> you know it's like get me a ticket to the premiere <laughs> and so we're like okay ooh thank god and that came at a, around the same time as us getting the actress and uh -huh. so it was perfect what does it mean to you to be a part of the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival it means being part of this com this awesome community um like i think like growing up and like be going to film school with kind of white guys mm -hmm. like it's really lonely because like you know what you want to say like people are like oh okay yeah it, it sounds a bit whiny or you know like and so um like i remember the first film festival i screened at was real asian in toronto mm -hmm. and i then i met like this like amazing like community and of people that 
did make work that I really connected to. And it was just so fruitful, like all the relationships like I've built, like, you know, just like even like when I'm like just having conversations with friends that I've met, like through the film festival circuit, just about stuff that we care about. Like it just it's it's just so fruitful and, and amazing to have kind of these film festivals that support and celebrate our work and like bring us all together. Have you always wanted to be a storyteller? I, I was a cinematographer and a photographer before that, but then, like, so then in film, like, so I, I was a photographer, went to film school, uh -huh. was a cinematographer there, and then I kind of got sick of, like, shooting, like, films about dick jokes and yeah. just really aggro <laughs> bro stuff, and then, like, and then I was like, oh, I'm a, I want to make a film, like, yeah. uh, like I want to tell my story, blah, 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 and then, like, my friends were like, oh, yeah, n you know, it's not that interesting, like, because uh -huh. these white guys, right, and so... <laughs> So I made it, but then they actually really liked it. It was like it was a, another like kind of short dark comedy about like um, the orientalization of Asian women, and mm -hmm. and it was just like really interesting because it was like I kind of slipped it, like slipped the message in there through this comedy, and uh -huh. like and they they kind of got it, you know, like, yeah. like to a certain extent. But you know, <laughs> so. so you must have had the uh, we. I talked to another filmmaker about that, but not only being Asian, but then being female and yeah. trying to, uh, I mean that. How big of a struggle was that? Yeah, that was like, it's interesting being a woman in the film industry because um, you kind of have to pretend to be a guy to get like respect uh -huh. on film sets a lot. You know, you have to understand what the alpha order is and you have uh -huh. to kind of like play it like how they do. And, mm -hmm. you know, working on a lot of like in, in the camera department of like film sets and stuff, you learn all that. And yeah. so, so you kind of have to like, um, play this kind of game which yeah. is interesting um and then on top of it you have to play white <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like women and then white um but i feel like like it, it's fi we're finally starting to kind of break through with um being able to tell like stories um that are really really unique mm -hmm. that lend um like a really both diverse and like um, in gender and also in terms of culture, mm -hmm. in terms of our point of view yeah. that is absent in media. And like, you know, the film industry is all about kind of new, fresh, exciting. And so um, I think that uniqueness does kind of lend um, a freshness to our voices, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, but but yeah, it like kind of it also sucks at the same time, because like when I'm at, I'm at I was at Slam Dance uh -huh. earlier this year, right? Like, like we premiered in Torino, which was awesome, very supportive, like, you know, yeah. gender equality is like, like super like woke there. Right. Uh -huh. But at Slam Dance, I remember like, you know, going to like, like the, all the events and everyone's like, oh, what film are you in? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I, do I look like actress? Like, I don't have like the face for an actress. <laughs> like, but, but, you, could, you know, and it's like, and then after I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm not um, like, you know, uh, actress and they're like yeah. oh okay what short program are you in and so it's like all these guys <laughs> so they're just underestimating you yeah and like i mean it was just like oh just having to kind of you know whereas like a lot of guys that are younger than me you know like you know they they you know people hear about the pt anderson you know like you know like was he 19 or something mm -hmm. when he made boogie nights was he 20 or yeah i'm not sure something like definitely, that definitely yeah. i mean a kid basically yeah. yeah this like mercurial guy that like you know that like has made it and like so it's a lot easier to believe but with like a woman it's just like oh okay you know they don't understand the narrative because mm -hmm. like it's not in their consciousness yeah and it's just you know you've just got to work through all the stereotypes and just build that body of work and, and get to get to be seen and get to be known yeah yeah. Well, congratulations. When when is your screening, and then uh, how can how can listeners who are not at the festival uh, get uh, see your work? It's screening at the Downtown Independent on Monday, May first, um, seven p.m. And um, the film will be released in select cities theatrically, and also will be on some sort of VOD service. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. All right.